Hello guys, let's talk about exome sequencing. And the first word you should learn about this uh, understanding is what is exome? And exome means uh, all the translatable genes in our genome. That means all the protein coding genes in a genome is termed as exome. So let's take it. So all the protein coding protein coding genes all the protein coding genes are termed as exome in our genome so if we if we take all the genes that code for protein in our genome we'll call them together as exome and if we sequence all those protein coding genes only it is called as the exome sequencing very very easy and how we actually achieve exome sequencing so we know that in eukaryotic genome vast region of the genome is filled with data which are not coding any proteins right so we call those dna as junk dna right or junk gene but actually uh, we have also seen that they they might have some important facts in the earlier during evolution but they lost the ability now so in this process we don't actually sequence all those genes we actually exclude all the unnecessary genes that do not code for protein we only select genes that codes for protein that means if you look at the eukaryotic genome what we'll find we will find certain sections in our genome certain sections which are coding proteins certain sections which are non coding proteins so the sections that are coding proteins are termed as you know exons let's say the blue colored regions are exons here this is also exon and rest of the genes are introns non coding regions so we will break this gene down we'll break the genome apart to take only the exon segments and then we'll sequence this segment and that's called the exon sequencing exome sequencing actually okay so in turn exome sequencing is a type of exon sequencing right all the exons together are termed as exome that's why it's called exome sequencing so let's begin with the process of exome sequencing we start with you know the whole uh, dna whole genome of ours then we break it down we make sharing of it and we produce all the uh, all the breakdown product of it it contains exons it contains introns remember right now from those what we'll do we take those genes we need to amplify the exons remember in any case for for sequencing purpose we need to select the perfect and typical dna that we need to sequence the pure quantity of that dna and we need to take that dna in higher amount and to increase uh, the number of that particular dna we need to use any amplification process amplification process and the amplification we can use are three or four different types of amplification process we can use uh, in case of exome sequencing now in this case we have seen the array based technique which is called the array capture technology or exome cap capture array so what we'll do now we take a uh, microarray because uh, you know microarray is containing all the genome uh, database sequences placed there then what we take we take those uh, sharing sequences of ours we add uh, the universal primer we ligate the universal primer both the ends of all these all these genes and then we put them to that array we allow them to be hybridized with that array and then we'll wash them off to select the perfect and desired number of genes and rest of the genes are just out because we use cdna library to screen them because you know cdna means the complementary dna and complementary dna will only consist of the exon segments not the intron segments so in the after the hybridization only exons can actually bind with the microarray rest of them will just wash away so we just select the exons out of the whole population of the genes right once we select the exons of our interest then what we'll do we take that exons out from that microarray now we actually use microarray here to select our desired exons from the vast population of introns and exon mixtures right once we get 
these exons in our hand, then we can use these exons to sequence them. We will sequence it via any kind of next generation sequencing, high throughput sequencing, pyro sequencing, Illumina sequencing, whatever kind of sequencing we use. We use multiple sequencer, we use supercomputer analogy and technologies to actually break down the sequence and finally what we will get, we get ultimate goal that is to understand what is the actual exome sequence of the individual to find out whether there is any disease associated with novel kind of variants or not. And for that we have a set of different stages which is I am not going to talk about in little bit uh, details. We simply just we produce certain terminals like clustering images then we read the data, align the reads then you finally structure and give us the SNV and, and ultimate the sequence, right. So, it is not important. The important thing is we need to break those uh, whole DNA down into shearing, then we need to select only the exons and for selecting the exons it is called the amplification of target and target amplification can be achieved via three or four different techniques. One of them is microarray based hybridization or array capture technology and that is what we have discussed here. Now, in the in, in here we will be talking about other technologies to do. For example, this is the array capture technology that we have talked about. This is the array capture. So, these are the filled with introns and exons. For example, the exons are only the blue ones, right. So, we, we are using the cDNA li library of, uh, of the microarray so that the exons can only bind, introns will not bind, then we take the exon in exons out in our hand and we get the exons, then we go for sequencing. The second technique that we are going to use here is uh, another hybridization technology, but this is not uh, microarray based, this is uh, only other kind of phosphate and other, other kind of uh, you know fluorescence hybridization technology where we can also use cDNA library clones and we hybridize our, uh, we, we particularly target those regions of the gene so that it can ultimately, those probes, we add probes, either phosphate probe or we can use uh, illuminant, I mean, uh, uh, we can use that luminescence probes, whatever probe we actually add, those probe will ultimately bind with exon sequence, not the intron sequence, because we choose those probes, we produce those probes using cDNA library of human genome. So, once we do that, they will only bind and they will give us some signal. Using those signal, we can identify which whichever segment of the genome is our genome, I mean whichever segment of the genome is exon. So, we take that exons out, we leave the ex, uh, introns away. So, that is how we can get exons in our hand. Now, remember all this process that we have seen earlier is very basic and simple. The only difference here, the only difference here in this third stage and that is uh, the amplification of the target and getting exons in our hand. For that, we use uh, this, this array based technology, we use this hybridization based technology and we also use a technology called, you know, here it is called the molecular inversion probes or MIP, MIP technology, molecular inversion probe. So, this is a probe as you can see, this probe is made in such a way so that it can only bind with the intron regions and inside it has exon region, some stretch of the nucleotide sequence. So, once it is bound with the, as you can see, it is bound with the, about the intron regions and exon regions are there, it is having a 3 prime hydroxyl, using that we can synthesize the exact exon sequence by adding all the uh, necessary enzymes in vitro and we will produce our desired, uh, we will get our, our desired exon segment from there and we can use that segment and we can, we can actually uh, break down this, uh, this probe from our exon then we can take that exon for our study. It is a little bit more complicated, but we can actually use it. This is the third one, molecular inversion probes. And the fourth one here is the PCR technology that we can use is simply amplify the segment using universe uh, multiplex PCR or uh, uniplex or multiplex, whatever kind of PCR we can use. So, you know, these are all technologies, microarray technology, hybridization technology, molecular inversion probe technology or multiplex PCR technology, whatever technology we use, the ultimate goal is to get exons 
exons in our hand. Once we get these exons in our hand, we can run high throughput sequencing and after that we will get our desired result. That's what exome sequencing is all about, right? So that's it guys and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.